everyone. Welcome back to A Guy in His Room. I'm the host, and your normal host, Brian, isn't here right now. I'm the, uh, I'm the curator and the uh, main producer for A Guy in His Room, and we just wanted to announce, I just wanted to come on quick and announce that we're going to go ahead and um, protest Joe Rogan. Um, we've let Spotify know on our Facebook page. If you want to go look us up on Facebook, a guy in his room. Um, we've announced that, yes, we are protesting. We w will remove all episodes from Spotify um, unless they drop, drop, drop Rogan. 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 Okay, we're in the Drop Rogan campaign. We're uh, protesting. And uh, we're going to just go ahead and fucking drop all the episodes unless Spotify. Listen, just uh, just let a message to Spotify. The ball's in your court, okay? The move, uh, we, we went ahead and did our chess move, but now it's your turn. The pawn is in uh, the play, and we're... Waiting on you to move the bishop or whatever chess piece you guys have. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we uh, we drew the first shot. We're waiting for you guys to return. So it's uh, balls in your court, Spotify. Um, I'm not sure who the head of Spotify is. I know they're not American, which, you know, I think they're like maybe Swedish or some kind of fucked up white supremacist race, so... If you guys want to go ahead and, you know, make your move. Tell us what, you know, if you're going to lose a guy in his room. All the episodes, by the way. Not just some of them. Every single fucking episode is going to be taken down unless you drop Rogan. 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 Now, this is going to make a big impact. We just are really... Guys, go ahead and donate um to the podcast or whatever you want to do. But we're going to just... Uh, we're gonna go ahead. We want Rogan Khan, okay? We really want Rogan Khan. And I don't know you first, uh, a lot of you First Amendment types are out there. Oh, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> well, guess what? It's not illegal to... They're a private company. They can drop Rogan. They can get rid of him. They're a private company. It doesn't matter that every time somebody speaks out against the mainstream... Uh, left, they get removed and censored, but this time, it's different, because they're a private company. Private company, private company. So, uh, balls in your court, guys. Just go ahead. We're waiting here, we're, uh, you know, go ahead and send us money in the meantime, just in case Spotify goes ahead and gives us the boot, calls us on our bluff. You know, I mean, this is going to make a difference, and we're really putting ourselves... We're joining in uh, a lot of great people. I mean, you know, you have Neil Young out there. Neil Young getting praised from the, the Who director. That's good, because you know he's part of the, uh... You know, the government's telling him, hey, you're a good old boy. Thanks, Neil, for doing the work that we're trying to tell, you know, everybody what to do. You're going ahead and joining the establishment. That's a good look for you, Neil. You always spoke out against the authority, but this time you're joining. But that's good. I'm glad you finally joined the, joined our side, Neil. Uh, and maybe he's pro lockdown. Maybe he's uh pro every business closing too. Good. Thanks, Neil. That's all I gotta say. So we're joining good company. We got Neil out there. We got Joni Mitchell. I'm I'm assuming Pearl Jam is gonna come soon. Who, uh, I don't know, any other outspoken people are probably going to join the ranks. Good, we're in good company. And hey, the ball's in your court, Spotify. It's your move. I'm keeping an eye on the chessboard. Go ahead. All right? Keep an eye. Keep an eye. Keep an eye. Keep an eye. Drop Rogan. Drop Rogan. Drop Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, Yeah. Just uh, wanted to play you that announcement. The uh, manager here at Guy's Room was really on my back about getting that message out there. But uh, you know what? Hey, sometimes you got to put your money where your mouth is. I mean, I'm going to lose a lot of revenue if uh, Spotify kicks us off. But it's good. We're in good company with Neil. Neil Young. 
Um, you know, he's kind of a renegade, really, when you think about it. He's really a rebel because not everybody is brave enough to join what everybody else in the mainstream news is saying. But he's he went ahead and did it, and he got praise from the WHO director who denied that COVID was a pandemic for months on end. Constantly kept saying, wouldn't let people investigate China. For <laughs> I mean, how pathetic. Like, I just can't. God, man. I thought that was so ironic and funny, though. I mean. Man, this is so fucking crazy that everybody's disturbed front man applauds Spotify for removing. Oh, wait, maybe it's for Rogan then. Let's see what this guy major right. So, oh, good. He's for, for uh, free speech and not capu capitulating to the mob. See, this this is the right of you to have. I may not agree with everything Joe Rogan or his guests say, but they're entitled to have the forum to say it. And I just got in an argument on Reddit, which every time you go on Reddit, that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have to, you can't be for removing Rogan. That's what somebody said, oh, it's not censorship because they're a private company. It's like they're putting public pressure on Spotify to remove and censor Rogan. I mean, you're only making, like, your enemy's side grow by doing that. If you're shutting down their ability to even talk, you're only going to make, like, if you hate Rogan, you really should be for him staying on Spotify. And I think this is going to keep happening because uh, there's just so many, like, outspoken activist musicians. I just think there's going to be more of this. Like, maybe Pearl Jam next, which, good, I don't really like. Like I said on another podcast, I think. They're, like, one of the most overrated bands. I just don't understand how you think you're, like, a rebel for saying stuff to the government claps you, like, on the back, says, good boy. <laughs> and this whole misinformation God Oh look at this This is just so fucking ridiculous Taking a stand over every little fucking thing God everybody has to fucking take a side constantly No, oh, Looks like I'm not online right now um, I don't want to keep Googling because uh, whenever I look at stuff online, there's always a there's always a lag in between me talking. I have to go edit it. Uh, they're gonna have COVID nineteen labeling. Who cares? Oh my God, we're working on adding an advisory to every episode that includes a discussion. I mean, that's gonna be every episode then. Who? How can you not mention COVID? It's impossible. I mean, at the very least, you'll just go, oh, I guess they're going to drop the mas mask mandate. Or, uh, oh, they're going to add a mask mandate. That's like every week. I mean, if they, if they fucking drop Rogan. God, how is it fucking dangerous? I mean, I don't understand how anyone's for censoring anyone. Like, even this, like, oh, Facebook and YouTube have come under fire for allowing conspiracy theorists to spread, the, for allowing conspiracy theorists. So you're going to censor. Okay, when, when you say, I mean, I'm sorry for, for anyone out there who disagrees with this, but uh, when you say we have to remove and fight, like, conspiracy theories on social media, you're saying censor. Like, there's no other definition. 
I don't care if it's a private company. Everybody uses it. I mean, if you censor them, then you have to go around and censor more people. It's only fair. Every side should be censored, not just the one conspiracy side or whatever the fuck. Somebody just talking. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then all these articles are just debunking Rogan now. That's like all the news does now because they have no fucking views. They have like 10,000 viewers on, a, on an episode now on CNN and shit. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but... uh. Anyway, um, the main thing I wanted to talk about right now is uh, some exciting news, guys. Um, Self Magazine, which is, a, I guess, a fitness uh, magazine. Looks like it became so woke that it is now, like, just fucking crazy. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, the, re the relentless reality. Hold on. I have to properly talk about this. <clears throat> the relentless. Hold on. Hey guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we at Self Magazine we want to talk about the relentless, relentless reality of anti-fitness fatness in fitness. A look at how we got to this point and where we go from here. This is Kelsey Miller for this magazine, Self. January 11th, 2022. And we're just going to talk about the fat fucking phobia that has to go. Go. go fat, go, fat, go, phobic, fat, phobic, 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 pieces on pieces. Big it, big it, shit. This is, this I'm is, sorry, people, but this is fitness now, okay? Have a good look, because this is the future. This is what sexiness is, okay? Look at this. Get used to it, okay? Oh, you thought that was her ass? No, that's just her belly button. <laughs> that's just her belly button. Sorry. You thought that was her ass cheek? Nope. That's called... What's that called again? Something. That is something. I'll tell you what. That is something. It's definitely something. Just hanging out. Just hanging out of there, man. The key to being fat and confident is to just let your fat just hang out. All right, I'm, I know I'm being mean right now, but... Uh, how is this in a fitness magazine? Like, even the CDC hasn't adjusted this yet. This is like the last category that woke people have won over in the media. Because a lot of people are still... Oh my God, this is so fucking crazy. Look at this. BMI is a hotly debated metric with a truly baffling and racist history. Too detailed to summarize here. How does race have to do with anything? What the fuck does race have to do with anything? Oh, here's another. Remember, like, last episode, I was talking about the bodies talk, dehumanizing talk. There are a lot of ways that people in fat bodies have learned that exercise is not for people that look like them. Okay? Uh, researchers have studied fat phobia in children as long as three, as young as three. I mean, look, like, I don't know what they're going to argue. In I'm not going to read this whole article, but, uh, like, what are they really trying to say here? Because, I mean, maybe you can, like, lift weights a bit and, like, maintain your fat body like i almost feel like at that point it, you're maintaining it like <laughs> like it's work almost because like at a certain point i just feel like i gotta lose like a little weight because like and i mean yeah it's definitely hard i think bmi maybe is a little outdated but it's not i don't see how it's racist everybody has a bmi thing i mean i did go to a doctor that was like an asian lady a few years back, and she was telling me to, like, get down to, like, uh, kind of a crazy amount of weight where I would look, like, very skinny if I did. So I think BMI or, like, the typical weight for an adult might need to be just a little bit. Like, I could see because, like, a normal person isn't going to be 145 
pounds when they're like, you know, 37 or whatever. I mean, it's just like hard, it seems. Unless you're like a crazy person. Like a lot of people do that intermittent fasting. And it's basically like uh, accepted bulimia. Because you're not throwing up, but you're eating a fucking shitload of food in a certain amount of time. It's kind of an eating disorder to me. I mean, I know a lot of people say it's healthy. I know celebrities do it. Jimmy Kimmel does it. I don't know who else does it. I'm sure a lot of people do it. That guy Lex uh, Friedman. Friedman. He does it. He talks about it all the time. It's fucking annoying. It's like super annoying. Um... People do it all the time. I mean, I guess it helps them lose weight. Keto, I think, doesn't seem like an... Keto a little bit might be too, though. I mean, intermittent fasting, you're you're fucking binging, and then you're fasting. So it's kind of... It sounds a little like an eating disorder. <laughs> I mean, if, if it wasn't a fad, and you told people... Like, imagine if that wasn't a trend. I actually have a parody video on that on my YouTube. Check out my YouTube. Uh, a guy in his room on YouTube... Or uh, Mosquito Man on YouTube. Um, and I have a parody video that no one watched on that. Intermittent fasting. But, uh. Hold on. I gotta get my. Um, but, like, imagine if nobody did the trend of intermittent fasting and you told someone, I've been doing this thing where, like, I eat. Actually, let me look up what the typical pattern is. Intermittent fasting, everybody. You know what's good about Rogan does the... Uh, I don't have somebody to Google while I'm talking, so I have to go back and edit all the silence out. But if I had a guy that did it, if somebody wants to work for me, like Tim Dillon has this like little like young guy that I feel like he has sex with or something. <laughs> Looks like an, a young intern. Um, the typical patterns. Man, that's crazy to have 500 calories a day, though. Um, okay, so there's different ones. Uh, intermittent fasting. Um, I do intermittent fasting. Like, I just fucking binge. And then I throw up. I think that's called bulimia. No, it's like this new thing. It's like intermittent fucking fasting. Uh, celebs are doing it. Kim Kardashian does it. She like eats little babies and then like purges them out. She like sacrifices children. Um, alternate day fasting. Uh, let me get a announcer effect. Alternate day fasting. Eat a normal diet one day and either completely fast or have one small meal. Less than 500 calories the next day. I think that's what Kimmel does, that dork that's not funny anymore, and he's just like an establishment idiot. It's like somebody took Jimmy Kimmel from the man show when he was funny and put just a corp, like a, just a robotic AI that like just says whatever shit joke is out that week about the Cheeto president or whatever. There's alternate day. Then there's 5-2 fasting. Eat a normal diet five days a week and fast... Oh my God, you gotta fucking not eat anything for two days a week? Jesus Christ. I'd rather do the alternate day, that's for sure. Although, that's kind of just too much of a difference. Daily time restricted fasting. Eat normally, but only with an eight hour window each day. See, this, that's the one I sort of tried to do once, but I didn't really do it the right way. Plus, I'm not supposed to, because I have, I have GERD. And with that, you're supposed to eat small meals, like, frequently. And, yeah. Eat normally. For example, skip breakfast, but eat lunch around noon and dinner by 8 p.m. So you stop by 8. But I don't Are you supposed to, like, eat a shitload, though? Um, see, some studies suggest that alternate day fasting is about as effective as a typical low-calorie diet. So why do it? I mean... Um, are you supposed to, like, fucking binge, though? 
I don't know. I feel like this wouldn't work after a while. Eating for eight hours and fasting for 16. What's going on with my audio? Uh, I just couldn't fast for two whole days. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, see? Look, here it says, and during your eating periods, eating normally does not mean going crazy. So, fuck that. I wouldn't ever do this. I did it because I thought you were allowed to, like, go crazy and just binge. <laughs> um, so, I guess nobody should be doing this. It seems pretty stupid. Oh, some people do it for uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Anyway, enough Googling. Uh... This is like what I was talking about. This whole fat phobia thing. Uh, this is like all... You know what the problem is? Like, scientific articles now and research papers are like actually from woke people. So they're like not correct anymore. Like, there's this doctor, uh, Deborah So, who's been on Rogan and a bunch of other podcasts and... um. She talks about how, you know, sec biological sex is real, obviously, and uh, gender is not a binary because there's no scientific proof. But she says, like, newer research papers, like, you know when people cite papers and stuff, and they're like, oh, you read this research uh, paper. Like, the ones now are, like, not correct because they're ide ideological and they want to support the woke bullshit. And that is just so fucking scary. I mean, I, we are screwed. There's no way to get past that then. We're all going to go downhill. I mean, I guess lately I've tried to have been, like, not as negative. But, like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, look at this. Tess Holiday, everybody. A role model, by the way. A fucking role model. Tess Holiday, everybody. Um, trigger warning. This story discusses details of disordered eating. Obviously, look at her. She has anorexia. See, she has anorexia, so she did. Okay, so I do remember... Seeing this in the news that she ha said she had anorexia. And you know what it is? It's because woke definitions don't mean... I bet you that's why. Because woke people don't have to have... Like, they can say make up whenever they want. Same thing with the gender stuff. Like, you just make up an identity, and then everybody has, like, has to, like, participate in your identity. Or maybe this is it. It says here, uh, um, eating daughters. <laughs> oh my God, I hate this fucking woke language. Look at this. Eating disorders in people with larger bodies are likely severely underdiagnosed just because they're huge. I mean, okay, maybe you have anorexia, but you're big, but because it's not been that long, like maybe she had anorexia for like a week and nobody noticed because if you're that big and you have anorexia for a week, I don't think you're going to look anorexic. So then maybe that's how, maybe that's how you have that anorexia. Um, I could see if she had bulimia. I mean, look, she maybe she did, but it couldn't have been for that long. You know what I mean? Like, just scientifically, which I know science is, like, racist now. Not joking. Google it. But, uh, man. And you know what's funny is I Googled this Self magazine. I thought it was a new magazine. It's called Self. And look what comes up with the old issues they had. Like, look at this. 2013, Gwyneth Paltrow's Slim Body Secrets. Melt off 10 pounds with this issue. This is the same magazine. I mean, what is wrong with being in shape? That's and the, the thing with me is like, I mean, I talked about Lizzo before in the podcast with the hypocrisy of like everybody loves Lizzo, but nobody's fat that likes her. So it's almost to me like a weird condescending yeah, you go, girl. You be fat. Good, because I'll get the guys that... <laughs> like, is what is there some weird thing in there that they're like, yeah, you go, girl, be fat. It's not competition to me, then. My, my guy's not going to fantasize over Lizzo. 
You go, girl. I love you. Yeah, fuck yeah, Lizzo, fuck yeah. Yes, Lizzo, yes. Go ahead, you do you. Ah, thank God, Lizzo's fat. Good. No, no competition for me, fat bitch. Yeah, Lizzo, go. Because <laughs> that's how women are to each other, so. Let's look up some other issues here. You know, that's from 2013. I mean, I guess it was a while ago, but it doesn't seem like it. Um, This might be... This might be more recent. 2015, Kerry Washington. Uh, Turbo Sculpt. She's super skinny here. Like, this is ridiculous to act like now you love fat people. It makes no sense. Same thing with Cosmopolitan. God, I remember... Growing, like my whole life, Cosmopolitan, like, and, I, and I'm not a girl, as far as you guys know. I didn't announce it yet, but, uh, but I even felt like, damn, they're like being really, they're probably fucking women up, because all their s headlines, like every time you would go into the grocery store, Cosmo would just be like, how to lose weight, how to look like this girl, because you're a fat piece of shit, parentheses. <laughs> it just, it just looks like. Probably what social media does to women now, like, makes them really, like, depressed and suicidal or whatever. You just look at a Cosmo and it's just like, how to lose weight? How to look like this woman? This is what guys like, okay? How to be skinny? And then they also Photoshop to make them even skinnier looking. So now they go, of course, overcorrection. This is the segment on this podcast called Over I'm sorry, Overcorrection. 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 So Cosmo, I think, went woke too, but Self Magazine now pretends that they're just body positive. How to be fat? Like, what's <laughs> there's no reason to read it then. Like, at least back then, even though it was, like, probably shaming. I mean, yeah, you can go, you don't have to be, go the opposite completely and go crazy. Um, I mean, man, this wasn't that long. Like, these weren't that long ago. To act like they're, like, just so, like, woke now. Rev up your metabolism. Healthy eating made easy. And now a new self-issue comes out. Fat eating made easy. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason to read it except to just read. Maybe, maybe people, maybe skinny girls buy it now just to be, like, fake supportive of fat people and to feel better about themselves. Okay, that is definitely not the right magazine. I just can't zoom in. Um, uh, that was Sophie Turner. That can't be that. 2016. Man, that's not. That doesn't seem very long ago. Self magazine. Sophie Turner. Very very skinny. Uh, kind of maybe started to not put the skinny stuff. The most fun workout. I guess it doesn't say like how to lose weight. Maybe they stopped doing that a little bit and then they. But I mean, this is just so like ridiculous. Sculpt your thighs. Burn more calories without working any harder. And this has Kesha on it. It's from. 2013, I think. Which she did have. A, she said she had an eating disorder, too. So that's ironic, too. Um, and now they would have, like, instead of, uh, it says Go Team USA. I guess this is, like, an Olympic swimmer or something. An actual woman. Now it would be, like, trans man competes. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, how far are we going to, like, go downward? I mean, people, now doctors are going to have to pretend the fat is, fat is healthy. I don't know, man. I don't know why you're in the ICU with COVID. Uh, couldn't be your weight or anything because you're, you're, you're a beautiful, magical weight. They'll have, like, magical, crazy, like, woke language. They'll be like, oh, so you're at a nice, magical, powerful woman hear me roar weight. You're at a shattering glass ceiling weight. So that's good. Um, but yeah, like a lot of like the liberal woke 
women are skinny still. Like, especially all the white women and, like, they're not going to, maybe they just don't talk about this, like, fat movement. I mean, it's just not, you know, it's just objectively not healthy to be big like that. I mean, maybe if you work out and you have, like, enough muscle to match the fat, but you're big. But, like, that would feel like that would be hard. I don't know. Yeah, man. Adele lost weight. Why didn't she fucking kill herself? Because she pisses me off. She lost weight. How dare she? I just feel like that's not a thing that, like, most people, regardless of your woke status, agree. You just won't talk about it, probably. Because it's just objectively not good to be huge. I mean, it's just not. And, like, it's just part of this thing where people lie and they pretend to, like, yeah, it's great. Oh, my God, good for you, Lizzo or Tess Holiday. Tess is a terrible name, too. It sounds like you're a fucking, like, <laughs> Tess. Sounds like you're, like, a biker older lady chick that, like, I don't know, smokes all day or something. Sons of Anarchy, like, grandmom or something. <laughs> um, what else is going on, guys? Yeah, I mean, you know, we just really, it, it is scary with the, I mean, people just denying reality to, like, fit in, to not be called out. Like, oh, no, that's good to be so big. Just, like, and then now you have these, like, diversity quotas. And it's one thing for those to be in movies and whatever. But, like, now you have Biden only hiring a black woman for certain things. It's like, I mean, if we keep doing that, we will run out of skilled people if you're only looking for an identity for everything. Like, oh, we, we need a... We we need a Latinx um, trans man airline pilot. We're running low on those, so we're just going to hire whoever comes up, and then you go on the plane and f crash. I mean, at a certain point, that just doesn't make any sense to... I mean, it really it doesn't make sense anyway. Um, and I mean, even when Obama got elected, everybody was like, yeah, black president. But he wasn't like... As far as I know, he wasn't, like, they didn't on purpose say, we're going to nominate a black guy. He just got nominated, you know. Um, and now we're doing that, and look at, you know, the vice president. Nobody wants her in there, but she's a black woman and a slash Asian, whatever. Indian, whatever it is. And, I mean, nobody likes her, and it has nothing to do with our identity. I don't understand this at all. Look at this. Tess Holliday identifies as a fat woman. What, she is a big woman, though. What do you mean identifies? <laughs> she, she identifies as a... What if she identifies as a, as a like skinny woman? Would we have to go... I mean, I guess we would. We, w we would have to say... Uh, she is and she always has been a skinny woman. Oh, my God, man. Look at this. How is this a fitness magazine? Four ways to respond to unnecessary encouragement at the gym. What is it? Somebody trying to, like, that's bad to, like, give you. Okay, so anybody in a sport, like, that's getting encouragement, you know how they always do that? Like, hey, let's go. That's bad. Hey, don't stress them out. Stop it. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on, you can do it, man. Just, yeah, man, you can do it. No, stop that. I feel, like, triggered because what if I can't and I don't want to? No, thank you. Just all this fucking terminology I hate. Empowering, I hate that word. Like, who determines what is empowering? Just to say that. That's one of those words where, like, you just say it to, like, trick, like, to manipulate someone into thinking it is. I mean... It's kind of like those headlines that are like manipulative, manipulative headlines. Like, this is very empowering. 
and then you click it and you're like, you know, I guess it is. I don't know. Maybe pe- people, I don't know. Do people get fooled by that? What are you going to do, guys? You know, just what are you going to do? Yeah. I suddenly have glasses on. If you're watching the video, you'll see I suddenly have glasses on now. Yeah. What are you going to do, guys? What are you going to do? Crap, what a wacky world we world live in. World live in. Remember when, like, there used to be, like, slow news days and, like, slow... Oh, there's not much going on in the news. I miss those. I miss those times, you know, when there was nothing going on and it was just, like, dumb stuff. The late-night TV host would have be like, just, like, I don't know what to talk about. I guess Monica Lewinsky again. Remember when that was the biggest scandal? Oh, those, oh, were, those the were the days. Were the days. Uh, you guys hear about the uh, whiskey? Huh? I won't look at a cigar the same way, am I right? Yeah, you hear about this? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I don't like about Rogan right now? He's dangerous. 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 You know what's dangerous right now? Talking to people is dangerous, everybody. Joe Rogan personally... Saying stuff like, I don't think I need the vaccine. Joe Rogan saying maybe he doesn't need the vaccine means he's dangerous, guys. And he should be, like, killed, maybe. Okay? Just so you guys know where I stand, Joe Rogan is dangerous. He's a dangerous misinfo source. And you know why I know that? Because the White House have commented that Rogan needs to be stopped. That's not scary, you know? It's not scary when the government and officials and the C and, like, who knows who else, the Pope. The Pope chimed in, by the way. He didn't say Rogan, I don't think, but he was saying we need to clamp clamp down. Clamp down. Clamp down. That's good when they say to clamp down. I mean, do these people that are against Rogan realize what they're signing up for? Like, you want... You want... Like, as soon as somebody steps out of line, you want them to be, like, deplatformed or whatever. The thing that, like, it's like, okay, yeah, you don't like um, Joe Rogan because he's not saying what the CDC is saying, I guess. I don't know. He's not a politician. He's not Trump. But they're kind of acting like he is, you know. (laughs) I guess he has that much power. People act like he has power to do things. You know how you have a conversation on a podcast and then that shapes the world? Well, that's what is going on. That's what Rogan's doing is he's talking to someone and then the whole world listens to Rogan. And he influences a lot of people. Okay? 80 million people listen to Rogan and for their medical advice. I mean, even if somebody listens to Rogan, that's on them. What happened to people being responsible for themselves? Like, I could see if it was like literally every listener was going out and just listening to Rogan and not, and being like a cult, like Rogan's a cult leader and you can't step out of the Rogan. (laughs) Like, they're acting like Rogan has power to like, like he's commanding a legion. Father Rogan is just commanding a legion of people. I guess uh, I I don't really need to do that much more for for this episode, but uh, I was trying to, like, get in a funny mood again. I've just been so annoyed with all the, like, calling for censorship and stuff lately. And also the people saying it's not censorship because it's a private company. They can do what they want. It's like, yeah, okay, technically. But you're also agreeing that, like, as soon as pressure gets put on someone, they, they, that you think... It's okay to put public pressure on someone to stop them from being being able to put out a podcast. Like, I mean, I don't know. God. 
I just miss the the good old days of Monica Lewinsky jokes, you know. Just uh, I miss when like when there was really somebody that said something offensive, you know. Like instead of a guy talking to a medical doctor, the most like benign conversation ever. I mean, the most controversial stuff they talked about was vaccine side effects. That that sh- maybe aren't reported completely, and that there should be treatment after somebody gets COVID. That's like. They just talked about how the vaccines were being pushed so much. That's like the most edgy conversation you could have now. That's the most, like, cancelable thing right now. The most dangerous. Dangerous. This is like when Beavis and Butthead had, was out and they, and some, like, teen, like, set fire to themselves by accident because they copied an episode. Like this is this is literally like whoever wants to silence Rogan and calling him dangerous, you're the same person that said there was like satanic messages on old records. I mean, you're this fucking same person. You're just on the opposite political aisle, but it's the same fucking argument. Like we need to stop cuz they shouldn't hear this. It's the same thing. No one should be allowed to listen to this music. No one should be allowed to listen to this podcast. Okay. I want him to get off Spotify so they stop talking about him. I'm sick of hearing about it. Like, get your own fucking thing. Stop. Judas Priest is evil, guys. Black Sabbath is evil. It's devil music. This rock and roll music's getting out of hand. Joe Rogan is dangerous. Like, God, what are we in the 50s again? Like the Red Scare going on? He's a communist. Just a different name for everything. No, it's different now because you have the co- pe- uh, pandemic. That's... Ugh. Nobody can, like, do that, though. Nobody can go, yeah, I guess this kind of happened before, but... Oh, no, it's different now. It's different. Because I think it now, so it's different because I think it now. Yeah, it's it's different. I'm saying it, so it's it's not it's not um a violation of free speech to to put public pressure on Rogan and get him taken off Spotify to just bully and mob your way to get him taken off Spotify. That's not that's not a violation of anything. They're a private company. Yeah, and I guess the Rock commented on Joe Rogan's post. Uh, I know. Um, he's had celebrities on. I don't know if anybody knows this. Joe Rogan has had Robert Downer Jr. was on there. Matthew McConaughey was on there. I mean, people were on Rogan, and there was no, like, how dare he go on Rogan. But now The Rock commented on Rogan's picture, and he was, like, kind of saying he wanted to go on. And then, like, I saw some fans, like, oh, how that sucks. The Rock's a fascist. The Rock's a fucking Nazi. Hmm. Oh, man. I mean, Colin Quinn uh, had it right. He has a book of, about um the origin of, like, the... Or how the 50 states. Just all about the U.S. states. And, uh, and part of that, he talks about um <laughs> how liberals now are, like, the uh, dirty dancing parents where they're, like, freaking out and saying everything's, like, her- heretical, you know? They're exactly the same fucking thing. I don't know if that, why they can't realize that they're being like that, but they just go, no, it's different now, because this is, no, this is different. It's not the same as, uh, you know, saying everybody's a witch and they should hang. It's not the same thing. It's not mob mentality. It's different, because it's a private company, okay? And I always do forget that, uh, yeah, all these kids are, I mean, (laughs) imagine what CEOs' conversations are like. Do you think it's bad to hear somebody say that maybe we should have, like, treatments for uh, corona after somebody gets it? And maybe that is being suppressed a little bit. You think that's a dangerous conversation? Imagine what any politician 
behind closed doors talks about. I mean, people are so dumb that they think, I mean, I don't know how you don't see how clearly there's like an elite class of people versus everyone else. Like, they don't care about people. Like, there's no, been nothing done to help people. Like, there's inflation, there's been no fucking stimulus sent out. At least Trump sent checks out when the corona hit. Biden hasn't done anything. He acted like gas prices went down, like, what, a quarter of one cent? I mean, I'm not driving, but... I mean, I I don't... uh, Groceries definitely cost a lot. I mean, I just went out earlier. And I think they were going up after the pandemic anyway, but now they are just not being helped because they don't care about people. And um, just why do people not realize that these are just elite, elite class and everybody else is a working class? Like, and everybody's, like, slamming those truckers that are all, like, um, actually going out and trying to, you know, say they're sick of everything. Like, that's who runs the country. And everybody else, you know, every politician hates them like they hate all of us they hate they look down on everybody i mean all they want is to get your vote they that's it and then they get mad when you don't vote for them enough like they shamed women for voting for trump they you know um yes who's your guy what team are you on you know I am a little better uh, now about I don't really get mad about celebrities having certain opinions that I don't agree with now. Like if there's a celebrities that are like idiotic or like ironically anti free speech with with Joe Rogan or whoever else, like I kind of now I'm like, all right, that's the religion. Like, you know, when you like kind of see somebody's religious, you. You just know they have this system where they're unwilling to talk. And that's the thing. Like, Rogan, like, won't be able to get anybody that disagrees with him to be on his podcast because they don't debate anyone. They shut you out. Um, you know, there's just no debate to be had. Um, no rationality anymore, so... But yeah, there's just a a class of lizard people that all meet behind closed doors. They turn into reptiles when the lights go out. Uh, Yeah, but I mean, I do sometimes wonder if they are all satanic satanic, 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 and they worship Satan Satan, 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 or something. something. Like what's behind their horrible greed and like, like, I mean, they're all psychopathic, horrible people. I mean, everybody in power. Like, why do you think every section of society now had a Me Too moment? Like, every single section of every industry had somebody that was like a monster. And they just went, yeah, everybody knew about it. (laughs) And no one stopped it until... Twitter got a hold of it. Oh, these people on Twitter say something? All right, now we're going to just say we all knew, but we didn't do anything. But now we're going to go, this is, un- we didn't know that much. You know, that's what you, uh, that's what's ironic about the Weinstein stuff and all that other stuff like Epstein. Oh, we didn't know everything. Or we didn't, uh, I had no idea. And then other people will go, yeah, everybody knew. And I believe those l- latter people, the latter group, because, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean, Harvey Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein, every picture he's in, even on like the Grammys and everything, he's like touching the actresses. He's creepy. He's a lecherous guy, which I don't ever use that word, but um, <laughs> he looks like he's like a creature. He doesn't even look like a man. He like, it's almost like a. Uh, I don't know. It's like some people are just so gross that like I don't even know it. Like Harvey Weinstein, he like is such an odd 
um, like shape and his body has like ugh it's I can't imagine how horrible he would look naked. I mean the fact that he disrobed in front of everyone. I mean I mean he just like looks like he's not like he's a creature. Like if he would just lift up. Imagine if he disrobed and he dropped his bathrobe like they said he did. Um You'd just see a bunch of flaps, I think. It would just like slide out. It would just, you'd hear like a, you know, when like you can imagine what a snail would sound like when it's crawling and like oozing around. That's what like what you would hear when his robe came down. You would just, like, Oh, God. Well, these are all after he was arrested, these pictures here. They're not going to be very flattering. They could at least made a better picture, even guy. Come on, don't kick him while he's down. <laughs> I'm sick of the fact that they're acting like it was only him, though, in all of Hollywood. Oh, yeah, it was only Harvey Weinstein. That's it. It was only him. We got the guy. We, the, we got the one guy that was doing stuff. Everybody else was fine. Who else do you think? You know, they had that uh, Brian Singer guy, which was a pedo thing. And then you had, um, there was some other ones that, like, really got not talked about that were fucking disgusting. Something Toback was one guy. I forget his full name. But, um, I mean, just look, you would really want to see this. I, like, how do you, like, as a, as a, like, a, as a human being, like, he didn't even bother to get, like, surgery or any corrective work done. I mean, he looks like he's never even, like, touched the tiniest weight ever. Like, he, he doesn't even bother with, like, walking, really, you know? <laughs> Man, he's like a ghoul. I feel like his true form would come out if if that was true about the reptilian like overlord elites or whatever that shape shift like he would he's definitely one of them because it would be like one of those things where like after dark when no one's around you'd see his true form and he'd just come out like I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take my dick out and jerk off under that plan. I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry. I'm fucking sorry. I need feeding. I need to feed on human women. I need sacrifices. Yeah, that's the only guy. It was only Harvey Weinstein, though. And then Epstein wasn't really involved in Hollywood. And I had no idea. We do, don't remember when Meryl Streep, Meryl Streep was like, uh, but he donated it to so many good causes. I had no idea, even though I was his best friend. It looks like after he got arrested, like his true form started coming out. Like somehow he just went, he, his balding accelerated like crazy here. I guess maybe he had, well, no, he was. Not like he had a full head. Oh wait, maybe he did have like plugs in. I don't know. Maybe he had some kind of thing going on, but it just really he just gave, his body gave up, man. Just like Bill Cosby, I guess too. He's like a creature too. He has like the same body type, just like a slug. And then I think he was just like pretending he couldn't walk. I need a cane. I can't walk anymore. Don't do this to me. Oh, can't. 
The true form's coming out. <laughs> oh, I need a walker. How dare you do this to me? I need a walker. And then you, like, the cameras will go away and you just walk fine. Yeah, he's the only one, though. So it's good they got the one guy. So, uh... Kevin Spacey uh, kind of got away with it a little bit. He just isn't, like, being hired. He could just... I, I was always wondering, like, look, if Kevin Spacey wanted to act, couldn't he just fund his own projects? I mean, they might have protests again, but Louis C.K. was still doing stand Not Not like Louis C.K. was comparable to <laughs> Kevin Spacey's thing. But, I mean, that wasn't like a... I don't know, Kevin Spacey's thing, like they say, he preyed on... Younger guys, but it's not as bad as Weinstein or even the Brian Singer guy to me. I mean, what they. It's just like really weird that everybody, Kevin Spacey, whoever accused him, like wound up dead. That was, that wasn't suspicious. So. Yeah, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, they got the one guy, the Weinstein. They shouldn't investigate anything else. Like, how every, all over the internet, there's all like stories about the Poltergeist girl, that they raped her. And, like, that's why she died, because she had some kind of... It's just so fucking <laughs> gross. Don't go down that rabbit hole, guys. That's a... Uh, you don't want to go down that rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. Uh, put you in movies. I can put you in a fucking movie. If you just look at my... Just look at my piece. You don't have to actually touch it. Just look at it. I wonder if he's one of those guys that, like, got off on humiliation. Like, tell me I'm gross. <laughs> that's so weird that that's. I mean, that's why I kind of think, like, everybody, every leader is a fucking evil monster. I mean, if they caught some of them and they're all in powerful positions, I mean. Like, how else do you get ahead? I mean, it's so gross, the amount of networking you have to do to get ahead in any kind of fucking job, really. But especially, like, entertainment or anything like that. Like, you would have to almost be, a pe like, a scumbag. Or so talented that, like, you don't have to network. You just kind of get noticed or something. But even then, you won't get to the top or anything. Um, you kind of have to play the game. Put you guys, in, yeah, yeah, hi, yeah, please, hi, like, please me. like me. Uh, you know, used to be able to just uh, move out to Hollywood and just try to be a star in the old L.A. I'm going to go be a star. I'm going to be in the movies. Yeah, I'm going to be in the movies. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be in the movies. I'm going to go out to Hollywood and be a waitress, and I'm just going to get noticed, and you're going to put me in the pictures. Oh, hi, are you a producer? Good, I'll suck your fucking cock. I'll just put me in a... <laughs> just like creepy Harvey Weinstein types just going to... picking out. Maybe that's how they used to do it. They used to go just pick out actresses. Oh, who's this cute waitress? I'll put her in a movie. I'm gonna just go be a waitress, I mean actress, yeah. Which what you had to do, guys. And, uh, yeah. You guys want to go ahead and subscribe to the Chicago Sun-Times? Go ahead, use promo code guy in this room. No, I don't know why this ad's showing on here. Guys, subscribe to, uh... And, uh, guy in this room is brought to you by... Keto, uh, Keto Blast. Use promo code guy in this room. Keto Blast all over your face. Yeah, Harvey Weinstein got arrested. Or the stories came out, and then, like, every actress and celebrity was like, yeah, actually, something happened to me, too. All right, I guess I'll come out with my story because everybody else did. Oh, we're all going against Harvey now? Okay. Now I will. I didn't say anything before, but uh, I didn't know he was doing that with everybody. I thought it was just the one that I knew about, and that was it. It was okay if it was the one or two girls that I knew he do stu did creepy stuff with, but I didn't want to say anything. 
Oh, wow. Look at this. Noel Gallagher. Oops. Noel Gallagher uh, claims Harvey Weinstein once stared at his wife, Sarah, for hours in a restaurant. He just sat there while fucking Harvey Weinstein just stared at her. Did he not say anything? <laughs> wow. I kind of like this Noel Gallagher guy, though. He's like very, uh, set, like says whatever he wants or whatever. Um, that happens only a few years ago. That's weird. He says Harvey Weinstein ha happened to be sat at a at a table with with loads of similar looking men. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. What do you even do? Like, I guess do you not go over and? I mean, I guess I would be like, let's move tables or. Because he wasn't an actor. He was just an oasis. I mean. I don't know. Do you say something? I would glare back at him, I guess. If somebody would did that, I mean. I don't know. That's so weird. I like all the comments. Like, uh, he was a pussy. He didn't say anything. Would you really get, get up and. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess, um, it might be a thing where, like, some women kind of get looked at a lot, so it's not even that uncommon, but, like, I guess to stare the whole time, like, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely glare back, and then it really depends on the situation. I don't know. I would beat the fuck out of him myself. Like, I would just get up. I would flip the fucking table they were all sitting at, all those guys. And I just would be like, I just would, like, put my fist up and I would challenge him. I like to challenge other men to get off. My wife likes it. <laughs> God, that's, like, the most trashy thing ever. If, like, if you would, like, start fights because you're, because you're, like, girl likes it. I love when he starts fights with people. Gets me so hot. He gets up and he's like, you want to go, bro? You want to go? Oh, my God. I love when you do that. I'm so fucking horny. Let's go fuck in the car. I'm so fucking horny. My boyfriend, like, he'll get in a lot of fights, like, when we're outside. Like, when we're out somewhere, he'll just, like, see a guy kind of look at me and then he'll be like, you got a problem? You got a problem over here? And I'll just be like, oh, my fucking God. I'm so wet. And, like, I'll be, like, so wet. I'll be dripping. And I'll be like, I better change or whatever. Let's just go in the car right now because I can't even control myself as fuck. Fuck me in the car. Oh, my God. You're so hot. I love how my, my guy, like, challenges men to a fight. I like when he just, like, starts fights in bars and gets kicked out. Yeah, my, uh, my boyfriend over there, he come, uh... We went over to pass and got a oogie and uh, went over to the bar and I uh, could start a fight. And it gets me so horny, to be honest with you. I get so horny, I tell him to go fuck me in the car. Cause I'm so horny, I get so wet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't really hear the Philly accent anymore, so I'm loose. I uh, can't really do it. Oh, yeah, you know what? I was going to say something to Harvey Weinstein, but, like, I thought he, maybe he did that only to the five girls that I knew he did stuff with, so I didn't say anything. But now I'm going to come out and say, and I'm going to pretend I'm, like, really cool. Like, uh, I'm in the Me Too thing, because fuck Harvey Weinstein. I was going to say something, but I, knit, I waited ten years to... <laughs> All the celebrities just like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna like wait till he gets found out, then I'm gonna say what a monster he is and that I was gonna say something. I was gonna put him in his place, but like, 
I'm just like too good of a. I'm I'm like you know I didn't think he was that bad, but I knew he was bad, but not. I don't understand how there's an industry of just talking about like what celebrities are wearing. Like oh Vanessa Hudgens showcases her figure in in green bikini. No, yet it was just a paparazzi like. Maybe they are playing. Maybe the celebrity's like, hey, I'm going to be at this beach. Can you just pretend like that you're, you snuck photos of me? But I want you to actually take care. I don't want you to say I'm show, showcasing my figure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're just on the beach. What do you mean showcasing her figure? Like, That's just a whole industry of articles. Anyway. So I'm going to, if you guys want to go ahead and buy the NFT of this episode, just go ahead and hit me up. And, uh, yeah, yeah I'm going to really I'm start really getting start into NFTs. NFTs, NFTs and, uh, and uh, I'm going to really start getting into crypto and diversifying my portfolio. So go ahead and get some NFTs. Yeah, go ahead and put a down payment and invest in NFTs. Cryptocurrency. Yeah. 